tall, gangly thing? Hello, everybody. Today, I am joined by a very, very special guest. I'm sure many of you know him. He is a regionals competitor, TFT streamer competitor, also unanimously ranked one in the latest Don't Talk If You Don't Know power rankings. It's Dish Soap. Dish Soap, thanks, for much, thanks so much for joining me. How are you doing? I appreciate it. I'm doing pretty well. Uh, yeah, it's nice to talk to you. I think we tried to talk like last set or something. Just didn't really work out. But uh, yeah, glad to finally reach out. Or glad you finally reached out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's just let's start here. For anyone who may not know too much about you, obviously a lot of people know who who you are. But for anyone who's maybe just getting started in TFT, doesn't know too much about who Dish Soap is, just tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, I mean, I guess like. I'm one of like the hardcore like ladder grinders uh, since like about set six. That's kind of when I started to like like get into competitive, and then just been slowly getting like better and better, hitting rank one a bunch of the times, uh, a bunch of times, and then I guess recently and like in set eight, I've actually like started to have like some real tournament success. Um, yeah, I guess that's a short yeah. way to describe uh, my TFT career. I guess I also stream, which is probably important to talk about let let's i, I kind of want to know going even further back was tft the first game that you played competitively um like kind of i played like like every single game that i like got into like i only like try to like get into games that i'm like good at so like for example i played hearthstone like i was like i didn't play any tournaments in hearthstone but i was like constantly like like top 20 legend when I did that, I played, like, some FPSs, like Team Fortress 2. The, like, that, that game was, like, not very competitive, but I was, was pretty good at it. Uh, was good at, like, CSGO when it was, like, first out, but kind of stopped playing FPSs. Um, I mostly got into, Heart, into TFT through Hearthstone, though. Just watching, like, Hearthstone streamers play TFT, that's kind of got into it. I didn't play any League at all. Um, and that's where I think, like, most of the TFT players uh, came from, so... I guess a, a which, bit different that way. Which Hearthstone streamers did you watch uh, uh, like when you moved to TFT? It, it was mostly just uh, Hafu and Dog. They were mm. like the first day I saw like grinding TFT early. Wait, so was, was that actually because obviously you played with against them at Summit? Yeah. Was that like a, I don't know, like a starstruck kind of moment playing yeah. with them? Yeah, it was crazy. Like <laughs> I like I, I I've, I've been watching Dog for like far like seven or eight years. So it was actually pretty crazy to meet him in person. That was awesome. Now, obviously, in the last year, you've kind of had this, I mean, I want to say a meteoric rise, right? Like you kind of went from being someone in TFT who didn't stream at all to all of a sudden being rank one and don't talk if you don't know. You're streaming to thousands of viewers like every time you go live. And it kind of feels like this has been, I imagine, a large change in your life like what has it been like for you to kind of go through this i don't know like i've already, i've always spent like a lot of time playing games and like now being able to like like do it like and it like i don't like feel bad about it because like i'm making money from streaming it it, it it feels really nice um yeah i don't know <laughs> like it, 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 it's it's really weird though like to like just think about like abstractly but i don't know it's nice does the the idea of, you know, being an influencer or having an audience, does that ever hit you that now it's like, you know, a year ago, if you say something about the game, nobody's really listening. I hope you don't like take offense to that. But like, you know, for the most part, like yeah. if you don't have a huge following, like no one's really listening. But now it's like if you say something, people are listening all the time. Do, do you ever feel that? Yeah. Um I feel like a lot of people actually, like, I mean, I don't know if this is an ego thing, but, like, I feel like a lot of people actually, like, listen to me for, like, like my thoughts on the game specifically, like, like more than, like, other streamers. Mm. Um, I, like, kind of noticed that. So, I, like, I, I genuinely try to be, like, when people ask me stuff, I genuinely try to give, like, my best answer, and I, like, don't half-ass anything. Um, so that, like, sometimes if, like, someone asks, like, something, like, I don't, like, really have a good answer to it, I'll just, I just won't answer it, but... Yeah, like, I, like I, I try my best to, like, be as informative as, as I can, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, obviously, I think one of the things that's unique about TFT is it kind of came out during this 
COVID era of our lives, right? And it, especially for the people who kind of came up through the ranks and started like building a following, their lives just kind of took a completely different path than they thought it would take if you're looking at like 2018, 2019. Um, I'm curious just to kind of re reflect on like the last couple of years of your life. Like, where do you think you are? What do you think you're doing if TFT doesn't come out or if you don't become a top player like you are right now? Uh, I mean, I would probably just like have a normal job, uh, still play games. Um, yeah, I don't know. Were you, were you, I don't know how old you are, but like, were you planning on going to school or oh. did you go to school or anything like that? Did TFT change that course at all? I uh, like kind of, but I literally like just graduated, like, like last, like this week, like last week. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Oh, congrats. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, this past year, like, I like barely went to like class at all. Uh, <laughs> like, I like I, I like graduated like with like the least possible amount of effort, um, because I kind of just wanted to like just jump into like like fully dedicating to like streaming as well and like putting more time into stuff like YouTube. Um, and like, like the plan right now is to like do this for like a couple of years, like just see how it works out. Um, but like previously, like the, the plan was just to like get a normal job, I guess. So, yeah. So, all right, let's, let's talk uh, more on the competitive side. Mm -hmm. So most people saw you come up in set six um, and I have some numbers that, I mean, I, I love looking at like the, the data of how people perform set to set. Um, and, and just in case you're not super familiar, but your, your AVP, your average placement in set six competitive was 4.5 in set seven, it was 4.3. And then you have this crazy jump in the current set to 3.4, 3.47 in set eight. Now, people have been saying for a long time that you are one of the best players on the server, and I'm pretty sure that this was not the first time you've been ranked number one by players. I don't know if you were ever... You might have been actually like the number one on Don't Talk If You Don't Know before, but obviously the results have caught up this set. What do you attribute that to? Um. Okay, honestly, I don't think my set 7.5 results were, were that correlated with like how good I actually was. Um, I mean, I think I'm better now than I was, like, I kind of have to be, but like, I, I'm not, I, I'm not that much, like, I'm not like 0.8 placements better. Um, I think like a little bit of that is just like, like a little bit of variance. Um, but I will say like, I've put a lot of, of effort into like just micro. I think that was like, like by far my weakest aspect in like set six and set seven. Um, I, I like I put a lot of effort into like figuring out how to like position every round. If I lose a round that I don't think I'm supposed to lose, I like go back and like watch like the fight, see what positioning mistakes I did, and like I try to be on top of that like twenty like the entire game. Um, it's like it's like a really big deal. Like if you lose one round because you're just on like the wrong side, like in like the early mid game, it's it has like huge ripple effects. And just being consistent with that is like definitely one of the ways you can just increase average placement. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, the, the reality is, you know, one point matters quite a bit in TFT, especially in a tournament setting, right? So the idea of how, how often do we have players lose a placement where someone else dies the same round? And it's like, okay, well, if I had saved five HP that game, I would have earned another placement. And it's, I'm sure that you can almost always save five HP over the course of an entire game of TFT. So I think people kind of get caught up in this idea of like high, high roll and low roll. when the reality is like, yeah, you have a lot of, uh, you have, a, you have the ability to change quite a bit, especially when it comes to your, to your own placements. Um, so the other, Oh, and you know, I actually, based on what you said before, I wanted to follow up with this because you're saying that 7.5, you feel like you played well, there were some variants. Maybe you, maybe you low rolled 7.5. Maybe you're high rolling a little bit and set eight and maybe the, the true dish soap skill level somewhere in between, obviously still a very, very strong player. But yesterday I tweeted, uh, about the average placement of players in, in set seven going into regionals versus the average placement of players in set eight. And there's a huge disparity this set between the top of regionals and the bottom of regionals. Asa 
actually responded saying he attributed it to the fact that he feels like there's more skill expression or more complexity in set eight versus set seven. Do you agree with that? Uh, not really. Um, I do think set eight like fits like my play style or like, I don't know if it's play style, but it fits like the way I like approach the game a lot better than set eight or set seven. Um, like especially recently, like I've like put in a lot of effort to like being able to know pretty much like every playable line and like having that edge is super important in like a game in like a set with hero augments where there's just probably like two to three times as many lines as like set seven, for example. Um, there's like a lot of edge to be gained out of that. So I like I, I guess like maybe a bit of the success in set eight has just been like just the way like the set plays out. But I don't think it's more skill expressive to know like twenty more comps. Like I guess I guess like you, you could say it is, but I don't There's, know. There's like maybe more effort required to yeah. to maintain your position on top though, right? Yeah, I like, think like dedication more, and like determination is a skill, right? Yeah, like there's there's just more homework you have to do. Um you, you see like there's a lot of people that did it like from last rituals that didn't make it to this one. Um and I, I feel like a lot of that is actually just like they're probably just like coasting and thinking like they could just get their own like like raw skill alone, but there's just so much like homework you have to do. And like just yeah, like time time spent to to like be yeah. on top of everything. Something I love talking about in in TFT is kind of like the spectrum of play style. Um, you know, I think on the opposite like extremes, you have players like Robin, who is this like game plan oriented. He's kind of known whether how, how true it is is kind of what, up for debate or whatever. But he's known for being like, I want to commit to something as early as possible. I have a game plan going in. I don't really waver from that game plan. Then you have your players like Spetham, Spicy Appies, very go with the flow. Um, try to play more intuitive. Where do you feel you live on this spectrum? Mm, probably like like 80% uh, like game plan, 20% intuitive, maybe. Mm. I think that's probably a good way to describe it. Um, but I feel like I, ha I have like, I mean, I want to say like I, I have more game plans than everyone else straight up. Um, so like I don't know, like so, some some boards like you, you could like maybe say like some boards I make are like maybe like you could say it's intuitive, but it's something like I probably already knew about like on two one. Mm, I love that. I, I think it speaks a lot to what you're saying before, where it's like you're willing to do the homework and that's where you you gain your edge. Uh, OK, so regionals is coming up uh, by the time people watch this interview. It'll be the week of regional. So the technically regionals is coming up this weekend. Um, I'm curious to know. Because obviously regionals looks a lot different this time around. There's no Soju, there's no Pressvent, there's no Ramblin. We're missing a lot of the players that you were talking about earlier. How do you feel about the strength of the field? Um, I think, like on average, it's higher than last time. But I mean, I know you mentioned that like the top players are like performing better, but I actually think like. There's like less high end than the less the less originals like like there's there's less people I'm like scared of. There's definitely that, less star power. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Do you like, feel like that actually does play a factor in like oh man like I'm in a lobby with these four players that I know I have to be concerned about versus I don't know who who's O in TFT right <laughs> like there's like that. Do you feel like that plays a factor in in going into tournament? Uh. I don't know if it affects like my play at all. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, for this regionals, um, I'm gonna do like a lot of prep, like just like watching like the field. Um, like I'm pretty much planning on like water reviewing everyone, and I, I mean I don't want to leak too much of what I'm gonna do, but it's probably the most prep anyone has done for regionals. So actually, one thing I was going to ask you, this is a, a perfect segue into that, is about the value of like making, quote unquote, scouting reports of other players in the field. How important do you think it is to actually understand other players in a tournament, especially with like a fixed size like this, where it's only 24, versus just playing your game? For me, I think it's super valuable to know what other people are playing, because I don't know, like I, like I feel confident 
playing almost everything. Um, a recent, like, I'll give an example, like Defender Cup. Uh, I mean, it, it's less important in in like these like bigger tournaments where like like you pl- you play you play two games and then your next lobby can just be completely like different. But like my first Defender Cup lobby on like day two, I think. Uh, like the entire lot, like I think it was like seven out of eight people were just AP one tricks. I mean, maybe six out of eight, but it, it, it was mm-hmm. some it was some crazy number. Um, and like my game plan on day one was starting tier, I think. But every single like on day two, I just started like bow every game because just kept on running into the AP players, and then worked out for me that you know, went second that tournament or something. So, like, I, I feel like for me, like I. I mean, personally, like, my philosophy with the game is that I value being uncontested over, like, everything else. Um, I think there's just so much benefit to set for being uncontested. Because, like, there's so many things that, like, can win if you hit. Uh, so, personally, like, getting a read on everyone is just, like, really big for me. Yeah, I feel like so much of what you've been saying, this circles back to this idea of you being willing to do the homework and getting the edge by having more game plans than other people. I love, I, I, that's really exciting to see. Hopefully that really comes to fruition at regionals. Now, obviously with regionals, we have three players qualifying to worlds directly and then two players qualifying to LCQ. So if you had to choose right now, the th- hand pick the three representatives going to worlds that you think give NA the best chance at winning worlds, who are they? Hmm, probably me, Satsuko, and... Hmm... Let me see this list of regionals players real quick. Probably Kyvix, I don't know. Like... I, I don't know, I just have, like, like, a weird amount of respect for him. Uh, I think, like, like people like Robin, Karam, Spethum, like, like they'll, they'll probably, like... Like if they make if they make it to worlds, they probably do well. But like for winning the tournament, it's like maybe like like Kyvix or Socks or something just to win. Yeah, I could definitely see that Kyvix. I mean, for so again, by the time this video comes out, there's another video that I would have just released. It's coming out on Sunday from us re- recording this, uh, talking about five players to watch going to regionals. Kyvix, for anyone who doesn't know, is the only player in North American history to have won both a mid set finale and a regional finals. So technically. D- Kyvix is actually the most decorated player in TFT history, which I think is pretty shocking for a lot of people who really only see Kyvix as like this weird wonky player who pulls out strange lines in tournament. Uh, but the reality is I think Kyvix is a great pick. He, he definitely is the kind of player who's capable of winning under, under the right conditions. But yeah, I think a lot of it also comes down to the fact that again, like our star power at regionals is definitely down this set and you are missing some of those players that I think, other other people may be a little bit more likely to pick as as their favorites. Um, I'm I'm also I'm interested. Actually, I don't want to go down the the Robin rabbit hole. I've talked too much about Robin lately, and I've been asking too many people about Robin in different forms of content. Hmm. Um, so I'll save that for another piece. Maybe maybe if you go on High Roll Radio one day. Um, okay. So another thing I wanted to talk about with you though is, and how do I say this? Because regionals is a very small target. You place top three, you go to Worlds. You place top five, you go to LCQ. Or top three or or top two or uh, best AVP. And then fourth, fifth, go to LCQ. That's a pretty small target for a field of 24 players, in my opinion. And you've obviously, you're coming off of this incredible set eight. And the reality is there is a world where you are the best performing player at regionals, but because of variance, you don't place top three or you don't make LCQ. And that's one of the hardest parts about competitive TFT, I think, to reconcile for a lot of people. You spend all set practicing, and then you have to hit a very narrow target that does rely on variance. So I'm kind of curious about internally, how do you reflect and judge on what success looks like in competitive TFT? Uh-huh. I, mean, or I, I guess like- here's another way to ask is like, are you going to be... If you don't make worlds, was set eight unsuccessful to you? Nah, no way. Uh, I mean, like, I, I would be like I said, upset about it for a few days. Um, honestly, like, it's kind of hard. Like, if I get eliminated before like the final day, it's kind of hard for me to watch the final day. 
uh, just me personally. Like, I just don't want anything to do with TFE for, like, like a few days. I don't, I don't know, like, if that's weird or not. But, like, like a, a few days later, I'm probably, like, I'm, I'm fine with it. Um, but I, I, I don't think it would be a failure. Like, I know I didn't, like, win any tournaments, but uh, making a few final lobbies, I don't know. It was pretty, like, I feel like I, like, played pretty well. And that's, like, about as, like, the best you can ask for with this game, honestly, sometimes. I'd have to check the the numbers. I think you might be the only player, maybe Weijin as well, to make final day in every single tournament because a lot of people didn't get that with mid set. No, I I didn't make it in corrupted or uh, or mech. No, 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 no. You you made final day. You just didn't make final. Oh, lobby. oh, I, th- I thought you meant final lobby. Never mind, never mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. I made final day every time. Yeah, so that's definitely. I mean, I I I don't think that anyone could argue that you had a bad setting. You had one of the best seeing individual performances we've ever seen in TFD history alongside Satsuko. Both of you basically breaking records for what an individual performance looks like, apart from Robin's like crazy set five. Um, so, you know, I think it's like an interesting discussion because it's really easy to get wrapped up in like the emotions of winning and losing. But in a game like TFT, where like there's just so much variance, sometimes you just got to stick to your guns and like be able to judge success or failure on your own terms. I mean, I'll, I'll just give an example. Like, like last tournament, I, I mean, I, I tripled my ace for the entire set or something because I, I went like, like two ace on like the final day. But like, I don't even think I played badly. Like, it was just some. Okay, honestly, one of the ace I played badly, but the other eighth was just a disturbing game. And like, sometimes that just happens, and you have to be okay with it. Long term, let's. Uh, I know you mentioned a little bit in the future about trying to do this for a few years. What what would in a perfect world, blue skies, and the future goes exactly how you would want it to? What does your long term plan with TFT look like? Oh, I mean, it's probably just I win worlds the set, and then get recognition off of that, and just like ride that out, or just just win worlds like 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 one of the like I mean I guess I mean <laughs> like everyone everyone's like goal is gonna be win worlds, but. I don't know, like maybe the next like four sets I win one of them, or at least at least get, like go to like make a final lobby world or something. That's probably like a more reasonable goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, makes sense. All right, well that's actually everything that I have for you. I mean, we we still have a little bit of time, but if there's anything if there's anything else you want to talk about, we have a little bit of room here. But if not, you can just go ahead and give some shout outs. Uh, I don't know if I want to shout out anyone in particular. Um. I mean, I guess shout out to. Okay, actually, like, I guess I will talk about this. Uh, I'm actually joined a study group for this set. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know how much we're actually, we're actually studying together. We did like a few mod reviews, but it's me, uh, Robin, Kurum, DQA, Broccoli. Um, mm. I mean, I guess, I guess shout out to them. I know, like, most people are like in a study group right now. Um. So you yeah. you typically have not gone into to tournaments with a study group. Is this new? You said for this set. Is this new for regionals, or have you guys done VOD reviews all set long? Uh, since eight point five. Since eight point five. Yeah, like eight point five release. Like I think we. I think I like made it like after <laughs> I got eliminated from mid set. Um, was was it you that kind of pioneered the group, saying like, "Hey, we should get together"? Yeah. Why those players? Uh, I invited Dequay Broccoli, who also got eliminated from mid-set. And then I was already talking with Karam for a bit. And then uh, Robin heard about it and wanted to join. So that was it. Before before this study group, I was mostly just talking to Aniko. And I like he, uh, he obviously had to quit to join Riot. So I had to start talking to different people. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. Well, I think that's everything I have for you. So... I don't think there's anything else we need to do. We can just go into the the little outro here. But Disho, thanks for joining me, man. It was, it was a pleasure getting to sit down, learn more about you, your your history, your growth to end up where you are right now. For everyone watching, if you haven't already, please subscribe. A lot of people who watch these interviews don't actually subscribe to the channel. So take a second right now, subscribe to stay up to date. I have a ton of TFT content 
planned out for the next couple of months. I think you guys are really going to enjoy what I have, uh, kind of what I'm working on right now. So definitely please comment, subscribe, do the whole YouTube thing. And other than that, keep your eyes peeled. I have some more content coming out next week and I'll catch you guys later.